John McLennan here, and in this video, you're gonna learn how to play Tales of Brave Ulysses as recorded by Cream on guitar. Now, this song has some awesome guitar parts in it and really demonstrates some psychedelic cream and some bluesy elements. There's two sections that you need to know. The first one has this sort of descending chord progression to it that is very common in classic rock. In fact, I consider this progression one of the defining chord progressions of classic rock. And then the other section is just a vamp over an A chord where Clapton is just shredding some leads. I'm gonna break it down for you step by step, but real quick before we dive in, if you're new to the channel and you haven't downloaded my fretboard guide yet, grab this first at the first link down below. And this is gonna show you the five chords and scales that I use to map out the fretboard. And I think about this when I'm playing anything on guitar, whether it's a rhythm part or taking a solo over chord changes, I look down at the neck and see this. I wanna show it to you and give it to you completely for free. Just go to johnmclennan.com slash fretboard guide or click the first link down below and you can grab your copy. So do that first, and with that said, let's break this song down. Let's break down how to play Tales of Brave Ulysses as recorded by Cream on guitar. Now the song starts off with just the band ringing out this D chord. They just sort of fade in there on a D, and I would play a D5, so I'd take that D chord, and then I wouldn't play the top string, that first string, I'd just mute that string. So that's going to sound like this. Then we go into this descending bass line, and really there's two sections you need to know, and this first one is the main progression, but it starts with the bass just going like this. And it's just a descending down progression, starting on the note D, at the fifth fret of the fifth string, then we're gonna pluck that note again and slide it down to the note C at the third fret. Then we'll pluck it again, slide C down to B, just one fret, and then slide another one fret B down to B flat. Now every two beats, we're gonna change. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then you can slide back up. Now there's this little 16th note slide, like one, two, three, e and a four, e and a one, e and a two, it's like ba-da, ba-da, so one. And then the vocal comes in, you thought the Latin winter, we play that two times. Then the band comes in, the drums come in, and I would play this. Now this progression follows that descending bass line, and this is one of the most common classic rock sounding chord progressions. This is used in so many songs. And I'm gonna start on that D chord we talked about for the intro, a D5. Then what I'm gonna do is take off that index finger and put the middle finger down on the third fret of the fifth string. So that's on the note C. Now I'm gonna lean it over just a little bit and mute off that fourth string. Then I'll play the open third string and then the third fret there on the second string. So I'm just playing the middle strings, but I'm muting low E, I'm muting the fourth string, and then also the first string. So it sounds like this. So we're gonna go D to that C. It's like a C add nine chord. Then we're just gonna change one note here. We move that third fret down to the second fret, just like our bass line, right? D down to C, then it went down a half step. So here this goes down a half step. But with a chord, this chord is now G over B. 
and then we're gonna make one more move. We're gonna drop this down to the first fret. So I'm gonna switch to my pinky there on the third fret of the second string. So it's just two fretted notes there. The first fret of the fifth string and the third fret of the second string. That's a B flat six. So just that progression in itself, you can see it sounds so classic rock like. In other progressions, they might go up to C, you know, like. That's another classic rock thing. But in this song, it's just D to C add 9 to G over B to B flat 6, then repeat. Now notice that this D note is common in all of those chords, like. That's a really cool sound where your ear just holds on to one note going through all the chords. It's, it's really cool. So let's add a little bit more rhythm with that. What if we played... That groove there. So what I did was just strum on the down B. One, down strum. Then on B2 I'm going to strum again, and then an up on that last sixteenth note of B2. So one E and a two E and a... Ba, ba, ba. Then when I go to the C chord, I'm going to play just the bass note. So I'm playing just the fifth string there. Twice on down plucks. Then I'll give a strum. Then a bass note again. Those are all eighth notes. Three and four and. So it's going to go one, two E and a three and four and. Then I repeat that. One, two E and a three and four and. Just basically moving through the rest of the chords. So one, two E and a three and four and one and two E and a three and four and So that goes twice once the band comes in. Then we come in with another verse and the lyrics are and the colors of the C. We're actually gonna play that progression four times. It's gonna sound like this. One, two, three, four. So just one note on the strum hand there, I am keeping it loose, and I'm able to sort of strum and just hit one string. So it takes uh, a lot of training with your strum hand to be able to get that down. So you might have to maybe anchor down a little bit when you're starting. And it doesn't have to be super precise, like you could hit the bass note, or you might strum it just like... Like it could be instead of like really exact. So just know it can it can be loose and as long as you're keeping up with the chords and you're keeping time, it's gonna sound good. So from there there's one other section we need to know, and after we do that four times, we go to this B section, and we just go to an A7 chord. But the chord that I would play is sort of this bluesy clapped in thing. I might do something like this. Then we're back to that main progression. Now, on the recording, it just goes to that A7, and Clapton uses a wah, you know, so you get this like... kind of sound, and then he's playing, you know... He's playing, like, lead stuff over that A7. It's just kind of a moment for uh, the band just to rip. And so... A couple things you could do, you could play this A7, and, and what it is is like, it looks like a D7 chord. If you know your D7 here, this is open, two, one, two, but what I do is bring that all the way up 
to where my middle finger is on the ninth fret, so nine, eight, nine. And I'm gonna try and just strum those top strings. And then you could give it a little bit of vibrato there. And that just kind of shaking the chord adds to the psychedelic factor there. So what I'm playing strumming wise is down, up, down, up, down. And it's just 16th notes, four 16th notes, and then a one quarter note. So one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. Again, if you have a wah, you know, you can turn that on. And then like that lick that I played, here's a classic Clapton lick. And, and this would be just out of your A minor pentatonic. I'm bending there the seventh fret of the third string. Then I grab that first string, fifth fret eight on the second string, then back to that seven bend, then five, then seven again. So after that you go straight back to the main progression. And then later in the song, the second time, once we play that B section, it goes back to like a breakdown and it's just bass again. So take your time with these guitar parts, try them out, listen to the recording, and you can even, if you have a wah-wah, you can turn it on on the bridge section or even over the descending chord progression for some more psychedelic sounds. And to help you put this together even more, be sure to go to johnmcclennan.com slash fretboard guide and grab my fretboard guide. Go and download this. It's gonna help you out so much. And it's a really useful, just one page PDF that you can print out, keep on your music stand or on your desktop as you're putting all this stuff together. It's gonna show you chords, it's gonna show you scales and how they connect. So if you wanna get into more soloing or you you want to just understand your fretboard better, this is really going to help you out. So just go to johnmclennan.com slash fretboard guide or click the first link down below. Also, as another song that you could work on after this, check out White Room on my channel. The chord progression is almost the same, so you already have an advantage learning this other song. So check that out as well. As always, thanks for your support here on the channel. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you have an amazing time practicing this song, and we'll see you in another video real soon.